Hello, we are going to talk about survey research today. That is chapter 8. Survey research involves the collection of information from a sample of individuals through their responses to questions. Surveys are the most popular form of social research because of their versatility, efficiency, and generalizability. I like to emphasize on the versatility for a second. Because this particular word and refer to that and the survey research is easy to do. And also the survey research can be done in many ways. There's a four major errors in survey research. So number one is a poor measurement. In order to avoid this poor measurement, one of the critical steps we should do is that we need to do pretest. Every questionnaire should be done with the pretesting. Non-response rate is another issue. So we need to use some, we call that a total design method or tailored design method to make sure that our respondents can answer our questions. Inadequate coverage of population, we need to also make sure that we can avoid that. We need to make sure that we can cover our population and comprehensive and we can hit our target population. Sampling errors is another issue, and the process of sampling, uh, random sampling can result in differences between the characteristic of the sample members and the population simply on the basis of chance. And these are the four major errors in doing survey research. There are several principles we can use to develop quality questionnaires. So number one is avoid confusing phrasing. The best way to do is to use a simple direct approach. And the simple direct approach to asking a question can minimize the confusion. We should always use a shorter rather than longer words and sentences. We should also avoid using double negatives. Double barreled questions are also an, another issue we need to avoid. Usually double barreled questions are putting two questions into one. So usually it's the part A and, and part B. For example, should we stop listening to rock and roll and start listening to traditional music? So the best way to deal with that, to split these two parts into, into two sentences. So by doing that, we can avoid these double barreled questions. Minimize the risk of bias. Sometimes specific words in survey questions can trigger some biases. For example, we ask people, are you still using marijuana? And still already put particular kind of meaning into the sentences or into the respondent's mind. So we, we need to avoid that. We need to avoid making either disagreement or agreement disagreeable. And the question like that is we call this is a social desirability questions. For example, we ask people, do you know uh, the senators from California in the U.S. Senate? And uh, people probably will answer that uh, yes, because in order to be part of this uh, kind of political uh, correctiveness, and so they want to give you the red answer, they give you the agreeable answer. Or you ask people, like, are, uh, do you steal battery from Walmart? And the answer is pretty clear. So this type of questions we need to be sensitive about. Next one is to minimize fence sitting and floating. So question like one, two, three, four, five. And so people may kind of choose three as a fence sitter. Or sometimes you have this uh, nine not apply. People may kind of flow there to select that. So those are also a very uh, easy uh, kind of mistake, uh, very easy to make. In order to design good quality questionnaires, we need to follow these principles. Number one, build upon existing instruments. If we use, uh, if we can use existing instruments, 
we can increase our reliability. So this is a very easy to do and also can help us increase the reliability of the questions. Number two, refine and test questions. So we want to make sure that it's a question can be tested and retested, make sure that we can have reliability. Number three is add interpretive questions. Sometimes the questions are so dry, so it's very important to add some interpretive questions. The following five questions are, uh, are very important for us to understand our respondents. And these are very uh, critical uh, things to do and to think about before we developing our questions. Number one, what do the respondents know? What relevant experiences do the respondents have? How consistent are the respondents' attitudes? Are respondents' actions consistent with their expressed attitudes? How strongly are the attitudes held? So all these questions can help us understand who are our audience? And so they are very important to, to consider before we designing the questionnaires. Research objectives should be formulated clearly before we designing questions. And there's many issues involved in questionnaire design. Nowadays, we are facing the global audience. So it's important when we do translation in the questionnaires, we can follow the following pr principles. Reliable, we want to make sure that we can convey the intended meaning of the original text. And the, the questionnaire should be complete, accurate, and culturally appropriate. The final uh, uh, the principle is the equivalent. So we want to make sure that our translation can equivalent the, the true meaning of the original, con uh, re original text. There are five major social science survey designs, and so they are male and self-administered surveys. This is a very traditional method to collect data. Male survey can reach people uh, far away. The issues that challenge male survey is that uh, it costs a lot of money nowadays because the transportation and the mail system is uh, facing a lot of challenges. The advantages by using mail survey is that you can have uh, as you can ask sensitive issues questions in doing in using mail survey like people's lifestyle questions. So those are the advantages. The disadvantages is that uh, and uh, the response rate is al always kind of low in uh, mail survey. So something we have to kind of consider. Group administration survey is very effective in collecting in terms of response rate. But the downside is that because you are there, sometimes uh, being there can be intrusive to some degree. Telephone survey is a very powerful, very effective way to collect data. And if you have, uh, if it's a tele uh, television uh, station, you want to collect data before uh, the 10 o'clock and data collect start at 9 o'clock, you can get this done within half an hour. So it's a telephone survey, it's a very powerful. But uh, the downside is the att people's attention span. People's attention span is getting lower and lower. 20 years ago, we are talking about uh, telephone survey, it's a 20 minutes. And 10 years ago, we are talking about 10 minutes. Now we are really talking about seven minutes or even lower. So the telephone survey and in terms of time in people's attention span is, a, is a, another kind of challenge. In personal survey, so it's a very important to use when we want to collect nonverbal cues because we can uh, use that to understand uh, the interviewees better. But the downside for the in-person uh, interviews is the cost usually is high and also it's, uh, it's not that convenient when you do in-person interviews. Web surveys are getting more and more popular, like SurveyMonkey, for example. But it's also some kind of constraints in terms of type of question you are, you are asking. And also there's a kind of technology kind of uh, constraints. So that is another kind of pro and cons for web surveys. So if we combine two 
survey methods together, we call that mixed methodology uh, in data collection. So those are also very popular nowadays. A comparison of survey designs that so we can get for the following conclusion. First, in-person interviews are the strongest design and generally preferable when sufficient resources and a trained interviewer staff are available. Telephone surveys have many of the advantages of in-person interviews at much less cost, but response rates are an increasing problem. Second, the best survey design for any particular study will be determined by the study's unique features and goals rather than by any absolute standard of what the best survey design is. So it really depends on the study's the features and also the goal. So those are the fundamental, uh, the, uh, the, the key uh, determining factor. In conclusion, survey research is an exceptionally efficient and productive method for investigating a wide array of social research questions. In addition to the potential benefits for social science, consideration of time and expenses frequently make a survey the preferred data collection method. The relative ease of conducting at least some types of survey research leads many people to imagine that no particular training or systematic procedures are required. And that's the end of the presentation.